controlled and transmuted into creative activity, were violently suppressed and all thoughts and ends of sex life were refused expression. Nevertheless, energy follows the direction of thought, with the result of that particularly magnetic type of energy attracted an increasing number of cells and atoms to itself. Therein is found the source of the tumors, growths and cancer so prevalent today. The same thing can be said about the violent inhibition imposed by an aspirant upon all emotional reactions and feelings. In their effort to control the astral body, these people resort to a process of direct inhibition and suppression. That suppression makes of the solar plexus center a great reservoir of drastically. Copyright Copyright 1998 Rufus Trust 143 A Treatise on the Seven Rays Volume 4 Esoteric Healing Retained Energy Transmutation of the emotions into aspiration and love and directive control is not present, and the existence of this vibrant reservoir of power brings about cancer of the stomach, of the liver, and sometimes of the entire area of the abdomen. I simply mention these causes overactivity of a center and the retention of energy, unexpressed and inhibited, is fruitful source of the cancer. We come back in every case, as you can see, to the fact of the existence of the centers and their physiological effects. So much emphasis has been laid upon the qualities and characteristics which man will develop when the centers are all properly organized and directed, that the effects of the energy which they receive and distribute into the physical organism have been largely overlooked. Two factors in connection with the centers and the bloodstream therefore warrant repetition and attention. 1. The bloodstream is the agent of the glandular system as it, in its turn, is an effect of the centers. The bloodstream carries to every part of the body those essential elements of which we know so little and which are responsible for making man psychologically what he is, and thus physically control his equipment. 2. The bloodstream is also the life and carries throughout the organism an aspect of the energy stored up by the centers which is not directly related to the endocrine system, it penetrates, by its radiation, into the bloodstream and into all the veins, arteries and capillaries within the area controlled by the center under consideration. This permeating energy of life itself, localized and qualified, can be either life-giving or death-bestowing. All diseases, except those due to accidents, wounds resulting in infections, and epidemics, can in the last analysis be traced to some condition of the centers, and therefore to energy running wild, to energy overactive and misdirected or insufficient and lacking altogether, are retained instead of used and transmuted into a higher corresponding center of energy. The mystery of the blood still remains to be solved, and will receive increasing attention as time goes on. The anemias, so prevalent today, are also due to excessive energy. I can only lay down general indications, state causes, and then leave to the intelligent investigators the task of studying effects, after accepting as a possible hypothesis the suggestions I have made. A proper study of the ductus glands and later of the entire glandular structure of the body and of the bloodstream will establish them as the paramount source of physical difficulty, inevitably, though slowly and patiently, 
The investigators will be forced back upon the centers and will come to include in their calculations the subjective nervous system, the entire subjective system of nadis which underlie the nerves throughout the body, and will demonstrate that these factors are responsible for the major diseases and the many subsidiary diseases and obscure complaints which plague humanity. The open-minded investigator, however, who starts with an acceptance of the fact of the centers, regarding them as possibly present and eventually capable of demonstration, will make far more rapid progress, diseases will then be brought under. Copyright Copyright 1998 Lucas Trust 144 A Treatise on the Seven Rays Volume 4 Esoteric Healing Controlled by a system of Laya Yoga, the science of the centers, which will be the sublimated form of the Laya Yoga of Atlantean days. Then the advanced student will control the centers by the power of thought. In the yoga of the future, through meditation and alignment and right practices, the centers will be brought under the direct control of the soul, a very different thing to the control of the centers by the mind and one for which the masses of men are not yet ready. To this the science of the breath will be added, not breathing exercises is now taught with often such dangerous results, but a breathing rhythm imposed by the mind through which the soul can work, and which will not require anything more than the simple rhythmic physical breath but which will reorganize the subtler bodies and bring the centers into ordered activity, according to Ray and Point in Evolution. I deal not with the pathology of these diseases that has been well considered and dealt with by ordinary medicine. I seek only in this part of our discussions to emphasize the subjective causes and the objective effects. The two must be related. The activity, excessive or inadequate, of the centers is the subjective cause, but remains yet unrecognized except by esotericists. The causes the apparent causes which are themselves the result of a true subjective cause are initiated by the physical man himself, either in this life or an earlier one, a point which we will discuss later. I have given you in the above much to consider, and as you ponder and think, as you study cases and types, as you watch the characteristics and qualities of those you know and which work out in some form of eventual disease, light will come. It is only the necessity of indicating the major sources of diseases and not overlooking them, even if the subject is too esoteric for the average intelligence to grasp, that has led me to include our second point. Diseases arising from obscure planetary conditions. It is obviously impossible for me to enlarge upon this subject, for it is not possible to give even a slight indication which could lead, at present, to any process of verification. What I say will have to be taken on trust and is dependent upon what I believe is recognized as my true veracity and integrity. I shall, and can, say but little, only enough to indicate one truthful cause of disease and one of such great age that it is inherent in the life of the planet itself. These diseases have no subjective or subtle origin, they are not the result of emotional conditions or of undesirable mental processes. They are not psychological in nature and therefore cannot be traced to any activity of the centers. They originate from within the planetary life itself and from its life aspect having a direct emanatory effect upon the individual atoms of which the dense physical body is composed. This is a point of importance to remember. 
The source of any disease of this nature induced by the planet itself, is due primarily, therefore, to an external impact of certain vibratory emanations coming from the surface of the planet, engendered deep within the planet. Copyright Copyright 1998 Lucas Trust 145 A Treatise on the Seven Rays Volume 4, Esoteric Healing And impinging upon the dense physical body These radiations play upon the units of energy which, in their totality, constitute the atomic substance of the body They are unconnected in any way with the bloodstream or with the nervous system They are consequently impossible to trace or isolate, because man is today so highly organized and integrated that these external impacts immediately evoke a response from the nervous system. The modern physician is at present unable to distinguish between the diseases arising from within the patient's own interior mechanism, tangible or intangible, and those which are in the nature of extraneous irritants, producing immediate effects upon the sensitive organism of man's body. I am not here referring to infectious or contagious difficulties. Perhaps one point which I might helpfully emphasize is that it is this obscure planetary effect, obscure to us, at this time upon the physical body which is the major cause of death where the purely animal form nature is concerned, for the forms of life present in the animal and vegetable kingdom, and to a lesser and slower degree in the mineral kingdom likewise. Death as far as the human being is concerned, is increasingly due to the planned intent and planned withdrawal of the soul, under the pressure of its own formulated intent. This is true to some degree of all who die, except those who are of so low a grade of intelligence that the soul is practically little more than an overshadowing agency. Of all who die, Highly developed or not, the later stages of dissolution, effective after the conscious withdrawal of the soul conscious on the part of the soul and becoming increasingly conscious on the part of the dying person, are taken over by this death bestowing power of the planetary life itself. In the case of the subhuman kingdoms in nature, death is the direct result of this obscure activity of the planet. The only idea as to its functioning which I can give you is that the soul of all non-human forms of life is an inherent aspect of the substance of which the planet is itself constructed. This soul can be withdrawn according to cycles, undetermined yet by science but fixed and certain in their working, apart from great planetary accidents or the direct action of the fourth kingdom in nature. This innate planetary power leads to the death of an animal and, in the larger sweep of evolution, to the extinction of a species, it leads also in time to the death of the forms of the vegetable kingdom and is also one of the causes which leads to the autumnal cycle in the year, producing the, sera, the yellow leaf, the loss of verdure in the grass, and those cyclic manifestations which indicate not alone death, upon a temporary and passing scale, but the complete cessation of vitality within a form. Times of perishing, or cyclic manifestations of the destroyer aspect, within the planet itself. These are necessarily difficult matters for you to grasp. This radiatory activity of the planetary life, cyclic in nature and eternally present, is closely related to the influence of the first ray. It is that aspect of the ray of will or power which produces the dissolution of the form, and the corruption and dissipation of the bodily vehicle until it has been again completely reabsorbed into the substance of the planet.
of Focus News of Copyright Copyright 1998 Lucas Trust 146